Okay, now let's look at some examples of present value. And just like with future value, when we are, or any of the time value money problems, the first thing that we're trying to do when we actually look at these problems without knowing what they are, is trying to identify exactly what the question is asking for. So this question says, what is the value today of $2,000 that you'll receive at the end of year three if the interest rate is 8% compounded annually? Okay. So the thing that's gonna give away future, uh, present value problems rather, is things like today. What is the value today, right? This just says, in other words, what is the present value of $2,000 that you're gonna receive at some point in the future, three years in the future to be precise. Okay. Um, and so we look at then, the next step is we write down the formula and remember that the present value formula is simply a rearranging of the future value formula so that the present value is equal to the future value that we're going to receive divided by one plus the rate raised to the power of uh, n, which is the number of periods that uh, we are going to have to wait. So we're looking to fill the future value. We need to identify the rate and the number of periods. So we can see all of those laid out pretty clearly here. This is a annually compounded rate, so we don't need to adjust the rate. We have three years as our n, so we have one plus 8% annual rate raised to three annual periods, and our future value is the $2,000 that we're going to receive. Huh. We do a little algebra here, and we get 1587.66. And now we can play around with it. We can look at the numbers a little bit. We can uh, understand what changes as the discount rate changes. Right? And this is a pretty important thing. And it's something that I would uh, expect you to have a good fundamental grasp of. This is always something that you can check your intuition by just rerunning the numbers, right? So for instance, if I wanted to say what happens to the present value of this uh, of this investment, if the discount rate five percent is lower than the eight percent that we originally calculated, is it higher or lower? That's the kind of fundamental grasp that I would uh, like you to be able to uh, attain by the time you leave this class. Right? But we can always check our work, right? And we can check our work and we can say okay. 1727.66. So the present value is higher when the discount rate is lower. The question we need to ask ourselves is, does that make sense? And the answer is to think about it from the other direction, right? If it's not clear to you, think about it from the other direction. The other way to think about this problem is to say, how much would I need to invest now in order to receive $2,000 at some point in the future, not some point, at three years in the future, if I'm gonna earn a certain interest rate. And now maybe it's more clear that if I'm gonna earn a lower interest rate, I need to start with a higher present value. I need to invest more money now if I'm gonna earn less money every year. And that should make clear what the, the, con the converse is here. If instead of the discount rate being lower, the discount rate is higher, so it's 15% for three years instead of either eight or 5%, we should expect that the present value is lower because the rate that I'm gonna earn is so much higher that the money that I can start with in order to get to $2,000 in three years can be significantly lower. And if we check our work, we can see that that is the case, that we can start with $1,315.03, uh, which is significantly lower than either of these two things. So again, this relationship between the discount rate and the present value or the future value is an important thing, but it's also uh, a sign that you have a good intuitive grasp of the time value of money relationship. Uh, but of course, the best part about it is that if you're not sure, you can always check your work. 
And what you should be doing is trying to explain the different results that you get within the context of this present value relationship. So now let's look at the time value of money over uh, the, the relationship between present value and time. Right? So what if the length of time in this investment is now 20 years instead of three? What should we expect to happen to the present value amount? And again, it's useful to think about this from the other direction. If I am still going to earn 8%, <clears throat> but I have 20 years to earn that amount instead of 3, so my N is 20, <clears throat> do I need to have uh, a larger or smaller amount invested into the account? And hopefully if you think about it, the answer becomes clear that if I have a longer time of earning 8%, I should be able to start with a lower amount of money initially. In other words, the present value of this investment can be lower because there is a lot more time for the account to earn money at 8% and get to $2,000. And you can see that because the time difference is so large, three to 20, the difference in the present value is uh, similarly large, and we only need to start with $429 in this account uh, and nine cents in order for it to turn into $2,000 if it can earn 8% for 20 years instead of three.